Welcome back, everybody, to the Sprint Championship with Club 100 for 2022, where round five saw us return to Bayford Meadows, one of our one of our more favourite tracks on the calendar, having only started racing there last year, but uh, it's become a quick favourite. So we'll jump straight into it with the heat number one, where we're starting on the outside of the grid in fourth position behind Kevin. So we're going to try and get to the inside as quickly as we can. So not a bad launch off the line, but not the greatest. We try to have a look to see if we can hang out on the outside. Nothing doing there, but a gap opens up on the right for us behind Ben Lambeth. So we take that and another gap then opens up on the apex as Kevin and Ben run a little bit wide. We're able to sneak up the inside there and slot ourselves up into third place. Uh, doesn't last long though. Ben gets us back going through the first corner and he says, you know what, I've got a pretty quick cart. Tuck it behind me and I'll pull you along. So I say, yep, yeah, not a problem at all. Let's see what we can do. But maybe get a little bit messy going through the first um, hairpin. We end up tapping the back of Ben. That hurts our momentum, which means that Kevin's not able to get his nose up the inside of us going through the left-hander. Going through the right-hander, we end up being out of position. And then we get sandwiched going through the left, which really hurts our momentum. So Mike Coppin gets through. There's Kevin. And then that's Reese Pope on the outside. Another quick driver who's able to hang it around the outside and take that position. So there's three positions lost, a fourth position as we end up caught on the outside going through the double right-hander. And then as we come towards the fast kink, we get a hit from behind and that's another three positions lost. So a pretty awful lap in heat one, losing seven positions in one lap, less than ideal. Able to get one back as we get a good run on Kevin going into the first corner and secure one position there. but. Overall, not the best finish to Heat 1. But we've got Heat 2 where we're starting on row number 3. And we end up gaining position here, so we end up on the inside rather than the outside, which is good for us. So behind Bryn Album, he's able to keep it nice and secure in second place going through the first corner. And then moving on to the next lap, we end up getting a hit from behind, which runs us into the back of Bryn as Fraser Brunton gets through on our inside we get through the inside on Bryn there and we kind of don't want to let Fraser run off into the distance as we know he is very capable of doing so coming down towards the kink and going into the right hander gap opens up on the inside so we take that thank you very much take our line on the exit and now it's a case of just trying to keep up with Fraser very fast driver and if we've got any hope of either winning or staying in second place we need to use that but Bit of a boring race, nothing really happened from that point. We had a gap behind. Fraser opened up that gap in front about two seconds as we crossed the line, but we secure AP2 going into heat number three. So starting slightly further back in this one because in your heats you get a front, a middle, and a back start. So this is our further back start, and we know it's crucial to try and get a good result in this race, and seeing as the first race wasn't particularly great, and if we want to make the A final the first time of asking we need to capitalise on the fact that we've got a second place in heat number two. So, good couple of positions off the start. Um, so we're moving forwards, which is good. That's what we want to be doing. Always moving forwards in sprint racing. Don't want to stay stagnant for too long. As the drivers in front try going three wide round the left-hand kink, which isn't going to work. So we are able to keep a slightly better line, more momentum, and that helps us up the inside going into the horseshoe. So we've managed to get up into P4 off the start. So a good run so far and we've got our eyes on the top three coming through the fast right hand kink driver in front doesn't quite get it right runs a little bit wide so we have a think about it going up into the last corners but uh, probably not the best idea it would take a pretty pretty lungy move to try and make that one done and it means we can keep a better line and more momentum going down the main straight which helps us get the position going into turn one so we're up into p3 now going through the left-hand hairpin on the infield later on in the race, we end up losing two positions there, ran a little bit deep, and space opened up for those two. So um, two positions lost, but we get one of them back coming through onto the back straight. Uh, they were running two by two around there, which doesn't really help you in terms of maintaining your minimum speed. So we're able to get one of those back as we're able to take the better line. And we're thinking now about trying to get ourselves back into P3 if we've got any hope of catching up with the two in front. So driver in front there runs a bit wide, even if you're trying to take a perfect line maybe, that's a little bit too wide, and especially when you've got someone close behind you, not what you want to be doing. That allows us to sneak up the inside, 
and we just take a slightly defensive line there going into the hairpin to secure it off and a bit of a gap in front which we're able to break down by the end of the race but maybe one lap too late um, but we're able to secure p3 and that means that we've qualified for the a final first time of asking so after what was a pretty poor round at Clay Pigeon last time out, uh, resulting in us being in the B final, not where we want to be, we're back in the A final on row number nine at Bayford Meadows to see what we can do and see if we can get a good result out of it. So here we are behind Reese Pope off the star inside, which is where we want to be, uh, especially as we've had experience being on the outside so far today and realizing it's not where you want to be to get run wide. We get right behind Reese, trying to follow him through any moves that he's going to make, and that means that we've also got the inside going through the kink and the first hairpin. So we've got Reese again making moves, see if we can follow him through right on his bumper, but we're not quite able to make the move there and had to be stuck on the outside going into the next hairpin. So we only lose one of those positions. Um, I say lose one of those positions, we didn't quite make it, but we'd end up getting a bit of a hit from behind, send us deep going into the right hand hairpin and we get into a right little sandwich as we go through the left kink onto the back straight. So that's Yusuf, I think, uh, on the outside of us there. So we try making sure that he stays there, but puts us into a bad position going through the double right-hander. And we end up being run wide as Yusuf had the line on us going through there. So P19, as we look to round off this first lap in the A final, not exactly where we want to be, but we've only lost one position and we'll look to follow Yusuf through here to get it back. So we're back to where we started, P18, and we're actually able to get a better run going out of the first corner. So we have slid it up the inside, going through the kink and then into the hairpin, up into P17, looking to break down that small gap that's developed in front of us now. So through this nice, windy, tight infield section, can't afford to go too far left, otherwise we'll have it thrown up the inside of us. So I have to keep a slightly compromised line, but everyone's having to do that so we don't lose too much time as a result. Moving on back on to the start finish straight in the slipstream getting a good bit of overspeed and we use it to get us up the inside of turn number one. Make sure we leave a bit of space on the outside for the driver there so we don't run them wide and off track risk getting penalty and that's us up into P16. So three laps down several left to go. Slightly longer races Final, so you have seven minute heats and 12 minute finals. So we've got a bit of extra time to try and make up these positions. Driver in front goes wide, trying to take that better line to maintain speed, but it opens up the gap for us on the inside. That's us up into P15. Take a slightly compromised line going into the hairpin, but not enough, um, and it allows Yusuf to come through. So we give him the space and tuck in behind him. Uh, see so Yusuf there pointing forward, so he thinks he's got the pace to be able to push along. So that's what we'll try and do. We'll see if we can get back onto his bumper follow him through but we weren't able to get close enough to follow him through on the move he's just made but we are able to make that move ourselves as we go into turn number one so we're on to lap six and we're up into p15 so three places gained off the start so far four places in total considering we were down at p19 at the end of lap number one now you can see at the front of yusuf there's a little gap and then quite a train of car so we want to try and get right up onto that because it's a little bit like the SP60 race the day before. Um, if one person in the group of front doesn't quite have the uh, the car to maintain their pace, it can really congest things and you can make some good places if you're in the right place at the right time, which is where we want to be. We're not quite there yet, so we need to get our head down to catch up. You can see just how quickly you catch up when the carts in front are fighting. So we're already back onto the bumper of Yusuf who goes for the move down the left hand side, good opportunistic move which hurts the momentum of that car in front of us and we're able to slip up the inside going to P14 as we go through the horseshoe and we're well and truly part of this train of carts now so it could well be that we gain a lot of positions but we come on to lap 11 now and we're behind Ed Bars who I think was the cause for this train of carts and um, not quite got the pull off of the corners so we're able to get right on the bumper and as we come up on to lap 12 we're starting to have a think about where we can make this move so see Ed there jumping in the seat trying to get himself going could have maybe made the move going into the first turn there but it would have been maybe a little bit rough so we stay behind and there's a bit of a gap developing in front of us but as that gap develops it gives us space to put it up the inside of Ed but Ed ends up getting us back around the outside as 
Yusuf in front had his momentum hurt. We ended up bumping into the back of us, which slowed us down. Ed was able to keep his momentum and went right around the outside. So we're going to have a bit of a rethink of what we can do here to try and gain another position to get up into P13, which will become P12 at the end of the race as Yusuf had a penalty in front of us. So coming up on the final lap, Ed capes it to the right-hand side, trying to keep that defensive line. And as he does, because he hasn't got quite the momentum going through the corner, we're able to carry ours a bit better up the inside. And now it's a game of trying to stay right alongside him to operate that block pass. If we'd gone through a bit too early, he might be able to get the cut back on us. So we try to stay right alongside him, managing our break and our speed so that he can't do the switch back on us. And on this last lap now, a bit too much of a gap to the carts in front. So it's just a matter of trying to keep Ed behind us. We know he's a good driver. If we make a mistake, he'll be able to put it up the inside. Of us and we don't want that to happen so through the horseshoe kept a slightly tight line on the entry going in over to the quick double right hander going on to the last set of the lap and now the only real place left for Ed to go for it is going for the last corner but we've got a decent pace going in break nice and late and then coming on to this last straight of the race cross the line and we gain that P12 which means just like Danny Gores we're one position off the class two podium so let's we'll try again next time at lid to see if we can get there but as always thank you very much for watching i hope you enjoyed and have a good one.